My original microdosing hypothesis was separate from weight loss and body composition. What if we use these in subclinical? I'm talking a fifth to a tenth of the standard starting dose. I'm talking tiny, tiny little amounts, true microdosing. And it's not just take the standard dose and break it into smaller doses, which is what some of the bro science guys say. It's just part of a toolkit. It's not a monotherapy. Axisomes are cool because they supposedly have the delivery information that the stem cell brings us. And so they are amazing. And early on, I was using them for everything. It, like what? For what? everything. Literally, I would put them anywhere I could try. I have, I have used them intravenously a lot, intraarticularly. I don't do any of this anymore because the FDA started coming down years ago. And I was like, you know what? I don't need to get in trouble with that. So I think the last time I put exosomes in a patient was probably 2020. Um, I've used them intrarectally. I've used them intravaginally. I have. So do you give them to patients now at all? No. You're not allowed. The FDA has said no. It's a gray zone and I don't feel like getting in trouble. So I don't, I, I used to do a lot that le I do a lot less than I used to. <laughs> But I forget about getting in trouble. Exosomes, like I was talking to, um, I was speaking to this physician from out of state, just for myself, just because again, I had breast cancer, I'm very careful. And she was telling me that she had a patient with sta advanced stage prostate cancer, and this patient received exosome. So like, I would be scared to give a cancer patient again. It's pro-grow. Right. It's intensely pro-grow. But she said that the swelling around the prostate came down, this guy could not urinate and after like a high dose of exosome is it like 600 some some crazy or 300 or 600 um that this patient started urinating and all the inflammation went down it's like a double-edged sword right with cancer you get so much inflammation around your tumor right. it's great but then what does it do to that tumor no one can answer that that's the risk reward conversation and the and you know the risk tolerance conversation you have with the patient because it's like well you know my mom was dying of Crohn's disease dying my mom had a severe flare in 2019 of Crohn's and she was going down and there was not much I mean if I had sent her off to GI to have you know any kind of testing that was invasive I was afraid they were going to disrupt her flora so much that she wasn't going to make it I mean she was she just it, it happened very quickly and I put exosomes in every hole I could get into her <laughs> in every way I could possible. And we did large doses. And we still were unsure at the time if this was being driven by maybe colorectal cancer. We didn't know. I mean, she was just so sick in front of me. And I did this under the guidance of her practitioner. It's her doctor, but I was doing the regenerative part. And I she was under the care of another doctor. And we all agreed together that, you know, the risk, the risk was far lower than the benefit potential. And we pulled her out of the tailspin. So now she's managed really well with medication and lifestyle is a huge piece of that. And low dose microdosing GLP ones has been hugely helpful for her. So anyway, you know, it's, it's that conversation. So for this prostate patient, it's like, what has he got to lose kind of situation versus, and it, I think that's a conversation for each individual patient. Well, can we talk about GLP ones? Yeah. So, um, Microdosing. So you just mentioned microdosing. I love microdosing as GLP ones. I mean, I think, and there's so many studies now coming out that it's, it's great for your brain. It's great for your heart. And I guess I want to ask both of you guys this: Is it great for your brain and great for your heart and great for dementia because you've you're no longer you know morbidly obese and that's that that hurts your heart and your brain and all of these things? Or is it great for everybody's heart and their brain? I will let you answer, but I would say we need a lot more studies yeah. to answer those questions. But definitely, they do have anti-inflammatory um, yeah. uh, benefits. Mm -hmm. They for sure do. So my original microdosing hypothesis was, and I called all of my friends that I knew who were using them clinically. And I called the compounding pharmacies and I asked around. And it was the conversation I was trying to see is separate from weight loss and body composition. What if we use these in subclinical, I'm talking a fifth to a 10th of the standard starting dose. I'm talking tiny, tiny little amounts, true microdosing. Have any of you done that? And what have you seen? And everyone said, well, I've maybe used a half dose or I've maybe used, you know, just shy of the, the standard starting dose. But in all cases, it was for body composition or weight loss or to bring somebody out of, you know, metabolic dysfunction. And I said, no, 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 I'm talking about like, what if we used it low key for acne, PCOS, 
Crohn's. Nail biting. Yeah. Hair pulling. Addiction. <laughs> yeah. Prophylactically for cardiovascular disease. You know, just high blood pressure. Have any of you done that? And there were some clinicians I heard about that were utilizing them for things outside of traditional use, but I could not get anybody to confirm that they were using them in these tiny little doses. And the reason I was thinking tiny little doses was because for women like you and I, who are already very lean, we don't need to lose any weight. Um, I, you know, I had a good 10 pounds extra on me when I started, but it was like very much inflammatory puff. I'm very much an autoimmune girl, but it wasn't a vanity weight loss thing. It wasn't even like the last five pounds weight loss thing. And it was nowhere near standard starting dose. And so I started utilizing it with anybody who would let me. And for how long have you been doing this? Two years. Called all my colleagues and said, I, I called colleagues who specifically did certain things. I called my friends who specialized in Lyme and my friends who specialized in mold and who had chronically ill patients. And I said, I want you to try the, this tiny, tiny little dose because those patients are so sensitive. You give them anything and they go sideways, but we have to get them stabilized so we can start giving them something to get them to heal. Right. And so it was really, that was my conversation. And it has now morphed into microdosing. And most often than not, I find that clinicians and these telemedicine companies are actually using the standard starting dose and they're calling it microdosing. 99% of the time they're using the standard starting dose and calling it microdosing. And that was never my intention. That's fine. Like whatever dose a patient needs, I'm not judging. But I was trying to say like, what if we use the tiniest little blip on the yeah, syringe? Yeah, you can't, you know, I don't know if I told you this, but in 2014, I started using these medications. Back then, the only thing we had was Trulicity and I was giving it to every PCOS patient who walked into my office. And was it amazing? It was amazing. And it was amazing because no one knew about it. I think if there were five doctors in this country, I was one of them prescribing it left and right. And the only thing I had was Trulicity in 2014. And I learned it from a cardiologist whenever I had an overweight, because you know, she knows my well woman exam, if you're overweight, even years ago, I'm like, you need to see a cardiologist, you need this, you need that. So I kept referring to this cardiologist. One day he picked up the phone. He's like, stop, <laughs> stop sending all your patients to me. I can't see all your patients. Give them Trulicity, yes. drop their weight yes. and then call me back. I'm yes. like, what is Trulicity? And then I started, I went home and I started researching and I, I started like, I was a little, you know, timid to start it. Um, I had never done weight loss. I mean, this is 11 years ago. So I started giving it 20 pounds, 30 pounds, 40 pounds, 60 pounds, 80 pounds. And then I started just prescribing it. And after that, it went to Victoza. Uh, and then, I mean, it, it kept getting better and better and better. Sexenda. Then it went to Ozempic and then it went to Wagovi and then... Anyways, it just got better and better and better. But one thing I did even like years ago, when patients dropped all their weight, I would have them do this because even for weight, when you would take them off, they would either gain it back or they would come back and say, I don't feel good. I'm bloated again. I'm this, I'm that. And, um, it, I've, that's why I get so passionate and I get so upset when people, I hear negative comments about GLP ones because it's life changing. And I have a story. This patient was maybe in 2017. She had lymphedema and she was being treated at Stanford. What's and lymphedema? She, swelling of her lower extremities. It's horrible. It's horrible. And, and there's they, nothing that treats it. They could not treat her. And in 2017, she comes to my office. I'm like, Listen, I'm not a lymphedema specialist, but I've used these medications now for five years. Let me give it to you and let's see if it gets better. She got like maybe 80% improvement with the weight loss that she had, with the inflammation, with, I mean, I've seen so many. So I could not agree with you. Everything you say, I agree. I give it to my patients who drink and they can't stop drinking. I give it to my patients who obsessively pick their skin and their skin is completely scarred. And no, you cannot. If you give someone like me 2.5 milligrams of a terzepatite, I will be in the emergency yeah, room the ER. vomiting my guts out. Yeah. So you can't do that. But right now, luckily, I don't, I've never prescribed compounded medications. But there are good compound, which we'll talk about in a minute. But yes, you don't. But the problem is patients don't know what's good or what's bad. Right. Right. You don't know where the raw materials are coming from. And it's good to use compounded medications, GLP ones I'm talking about when there is a shortage. Right. But right now we don't have a shortage. You can actually get the terzepatides right now from in the vials. From in the vials. So it's not a pen. Before it was just a 2.5 
hold your breath, take your Zofran and inject yourself. But now you can actually get the vials and you can really, I have a chart in my office that I've had for, for a while. We used it for Ozempic for many years that it has, it's my chart, how to microdose it. And then you just give a tiny dosage of it without one you know, once a week. It depends. I might do it twice a week. What I do act- you guys consider a microdose? A dose below the lowest dose that's available on the market as a starting dose. That's how I describe it. But someone like the three of us in this room, let's say I wanted to microdose you. Let's say I want to give you Ozempic. If the starting dose is 0.25, I might start you at zero point like half that dose or a third of that dose there's not and you know i usually would give it and i'm like if you don't feel anything in three to four days redose yourself if you don't feel again then then you can literally count the clicks like if you do five clicks that takes you to i don't know i'm making this up 0.125 next week do six clicks then go to seven that's microdosing well so i you know, we're perimenopause, menopausal, all that. And a lot of us are, you know, we become, we need to work, our metabolism shuts down. We get the, the tire around our stomach, all these things, wonderful things that happen to us when we hit perimenopause. You don't have any tires well, anywhere. <laughs> I'm just saying that a lot of, a lot of women hit menopause. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, I'm getting it. It's not fun. Right. And it's so it's like the constant. I <laughs> thought from? microdosing was, what's the one, um, Manjaro? Manjaro, that you could, that you do the it's smallest dose, you do the smallest dose every three months. It's all over the place. So there's, okay, so that, so you, there's, is that also considered microdosing? I don't consider I don't that consider microdosing. That. It's all over the place. You can, some people say do it every two weeks. Some people say take a standard dose and break it into smaller doses. I mean, it's again, it's the wild west. Like it's turned into a whole thing that I can't, I cannot control the what do you, anymore, so. you two i cannot here. sit here t- i don't think anyone has done it in this country as long as i have really i don't know maybe the cardiologist who referred his patients to me so how do you microdose i microdose different people differently yeah everyone's okay. different. am i losing the patient's weight am i is the patient thin like, like you yes. then i would give you a tiny dose and on that tiny dose if i notice that you're losing weight you stop I, I either stop it or I don't stop it. I would do it like every two weeks, every 10. Every patient is different. You might take two patients, let's say like you, one, you give zero point, like half of the 0.25 and the patient's nauseous and doesn't feel good, has no energy and is sleepy and is exhausted. And the other person feels nothing. One person throws up, the other person feels nothing. I have a family member of mine, when you say wild, wild west, she was visiting my mom and my mom is pre-diabetic. So she's been on these medications for 11 years. And in her fridge, she had ZepBound 7.5, right? And this family member is a far, she's like, oh, ZepBound, I want to try it. Oh, no. And she just injected herself (gasps) three days ago with 7.5. Is she so sick? Oh my God. Yes. So Nurse sick. to her has IV fluids, yeah. Zofran, projectile vomiting, yeah. oh. bedridden, not being able to eat. So uh, the point is, this is not something you can do at home. That's why you have to have, a, you have to have, have someone experience. Really experienced. It's yeah. pretty easy to figure it out. Honestly, it's not rocket science, but you still, when you want to first start, you need someone who understands it. And, um, I would never give a pen of 2.5 to someone with your height and weight. Never. I would never do that. I, I co- completely agree with you. And I am actually even more conservative and I'll start even lower. I might start at a 10th a fifth or a tenth of that. And I'm using other peptides and I'm doing all the things. So we're, it's just part of a toolkit. It's not a monotherapy and it's not just take the standard dose and break it into smaller doses, which is what some of the bro science guys say. And I mean, it's all over the place. So I don't think we can even define it anymore, but it is lower than the standard starting dose. And I rarely even have to get people up to the standard starting dose, but I'm rarely using it for weight loss. I'm most often using it for inflammation, autoimmune disease, depression, acne, PCOS, um, high blood pressure. Yeah, I know. Just cardio protective, just, just whatever it's, it's worth a try. And, and I'm not going to take a healthy patient and say, Hey, sure. Yeah. Thing. Let me write you a script. I mean, we're going to do lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people need the GLP one just to quiet the noise. And I wouldn't even say food noise, like just the noise because it works on those dopaminergic and serotonergic pathways in the brain. And so sometimes people just get quiet from the anxiety, quiet from 
obsessive th thoughts. Yes, there's like a normal feeling that comes over them and they're ADHD. They're like, oh, I can function. And so sometimes we'll use it initially or early to give them a leg up. Other times it comes in later when we just got to maybe pull another tool out. So it really depends. But I, I will say we don't have any. And the argument I keep getting is oh, there's no studies on the microdose. I totally agree with them. Microdosing was never intended to be a weight loss strategy. And in fact, I'll tell you the truth. It is not an effective weight loss strategy. I have said this from day one. I have been completely clear from day one. If you go back and watch any of my content, if you watch any of the other podcasts that I was on over the past year plus, if you watch my free four-part...